Hello everyone, um, I'm Barbara. I'm uh, together with my husband, the owner of this beautiful Fontempa show over here 46. It's called Pink Penguin. We are in Dubrovnik at the moment in Croatia. We're uh, yeah, stuck here after we've been struck by lightning. So we have to wait for insurance uh, to deal with it and to replace all the electronics. That's why I have time for boat projects. And one of them is replacing the old um, handrails because they were um, they were still the original ones. The boat was built in 2004, so it was rusty and the rust was dripping down to the chill code. And uh, anyway, we needed to replace them. So that's why we decided to use uh, Dyneema. And the Dyneema rope that we bought uh, has a reflecting mantle, a reflecting cover. And um, I will find out the name of the company that produces it. We bought it from our creation uh, rigger and um, this is how the outcome eventually looks like. We've got the reflecting Dyneema cover. Inside we've got the Dyneema itself on the bow. So the top one, the lower one and of course on starboard again we've got the turnbuckle. So we've got uh, on the sides we've got about 10 meter of rope it stretched about four centimeters so that means with the turnbuckles we were able i don't know yet how it's going to work when it's raining like if it's going to um, loosen a little bit if it's going to tighten we've got rain coming in on thursday so we'll see then so eventually with the turnbuckle i'm able to tighten it and uh, it's secured with the brummel lock i'm going to show you in a second how i'll do it this is how the rope looks like so it's got a dyneema core and it's got the mantle, the cover, and it has reflecting uh, thread in it. So uh, when we were at anchor or on a mooring buoy field and somebody is coming around at night using the flashlight or torches, um, they can see us much better because we will probably look like a Christmas tree. Right, my wonderful sophisticated cutting board. Uh, every object on a boat usually gets a second chance. So from kitchen to my splicing workshop. So what you do first, um, you pull back the cover and you take a needle and just bury it so it doesn't move anymore. There we go. Then the first thing you do, you determine uh, how big you want the loop to be. Um, it very much depends on if you have the turnbuckle or if you need to loop it like like this. Uh, if you need to loop it through one of the, the poles, um, of course you need a bigger loop. So if you need this one, you can just try it with your fingers and then make a mark here where you want the Brommel lock. So you simply... Mark it, open it up, voila, that's the size of your loop. Okay, what you do first, so you have um, point A and you've got point B. You open it up a little bit, bury your splicing tool in the middle and then simply run it through. So you loop it through itself, you've got one. So that's A and we've got B here. You do the same one, inserting your splicing tool. And then running it through. So basically what you do twice, you loop the Dyneema through itself. Okay, one and two, A and B. Then what you do next is you go to E A and you insert, it's the short end and the long end. You insert the long end back through the loop that you've just made. Pull it through, pull it, pull it, pull it until B comes through A. As easy as that. Then you take B and open up the loop. So basically you take the short end now, open up the loop you've done at the beginning and that's it. So no magic, no hocus pocus. So it looks like a figure of eight. So you've got one lock, you've got the second lock, 
And then when you pull it tight, that's where the magic happens. Okay, there is a little bit of magic involved. So that's where the magic happens. So you've got the loop, you've got the Brummel lock, and then you have the end piece. And what you do with the end piece, you bury it in the long end. So you open it up. Take this wonderful tool, insert it, come out just below the Brummel lock. By the way, when you go on, on YouTube and you type in Brummel lock, or Dyneema splicing, uh, you'll get, there are not too many, but there are some really nice um, tutorials done by rope companies. And then you pull it through. There we go. Milk it. That's how you call it. Milk it. And that's it. Huh? That's it. Then you open the needle. You pull the mantle or you push the mantle over the Brummel lock. And here we go. Now, one thing I found out when you secure it with the thread, I've got this splicing thread. It's a uh, whipping twine. Um, you can see that the men sort of uh, worn out at the end. So when I start sewing to secure it in place, I start here, make my way up. So what you first start is you go through the middle, all the way to the knot you tied, pull it a little tighter to bury the knot inside it, go back through the way you came, oops, here we go, and then you simply twist it, make sure the threads are all very close to each other and pull it tight, pull it tight. This, that's why at the end of the day, after doing 12 of those um, sewings, eventually you won't be able to feel your thumbs anymore, but that's part of the fun, isn't it? And then you reach the end where you can see it's uh, poking out. Just secure it a little bit in place and then you just go over it. Here we go. And then you start come on. You start burying the needle to this side, back again, and then what I like to do because it simply looks neat, do the diagonal stitch. Now it might get a little hard to pull through. You can take some tools to help you with. So one diagonal and then you go all the way up here. And then, so you've got one, two, and now for the third one, uh, it's the usual, you run out of thread, doesn't matter, but you get the point, okay? So you get the point and then the end you bury it twice or three times again um, in the rope. And that's it. And this is how it looks like at the back. So it simply loops through itself again with a Brummel lock. So we've got the turnbuckle in the front and we've got looped it through the poles at the back. Top one and the lower one.